Hi, everybody. Hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. I had a monitor going in the background and I couldn't hear myself think. All I could hear was music. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to another Facebook Live with the Acrylic Diva here. I am going to jump into uh, some information on using high flow and fluids today. But first, I want to make sure that you are signed up for the mailing list so that you get advance notice. So make sure you do that. I'm going to go over to the YouTube chat window right now and put the Acrylic Diva, put AcrylicDiva.com in there so that you can go right over there and sign up for the mailing list. And then you'll, you'll get information about when we're going to go live and stuff like that. Let me just make a couple of windows smaller so I can see a couple of things here. Okay, so there's that. And also, if you're in the Facebook page, let me jump over there and see if there's anybody in our Facebook page. Okay, you guys can make comments on the Facebook page, and I'm going to be giving away prizes today. So I'm going to choose somebody out of the comment section, either from the Facebook page or from the YouTube chat box one or the other, and I'm going to give some paint away. I'm giving away Heavy Gel Gloss, um, Interference Violet, yum, and Pyro Red Dark. Whoops, I showed there. There you go. Okay, so I'm giving those away today. So hang on for a bit, and um, I'll be asking you to check the chat box and... Um, We'll give some prizes away. Okay. Okay. Now let's jump into what I want to talk about today, which is the difference between fluids, high flow, and heavy body paint. Three different types of paint here. So fluid paint, oops, I'm holding the wrong thing. <laughs> fluid paint. Let me show that to the camera. I'm going to make my fingers get out of the way. Fluid paint. Okay, quinacridone magenta, yay! Love quinacridone magenta um, in everything at all times. Uh, quinacridone magenta high flow. See the nozzle on this one? See that nozzle is very different than the top of this one. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a minute. And then heavy body paint. Now I don't have quinacridone magenta handy, so I've got quinacridone red which is quinacridone magenta's cousin. So we'll talk about that as well. Okay, so when we are talking about acrylic paint, we are talking about pigment that is in a binder, in a polymer binder. And the, the best way to describe this is like little plastic balls floating in a little bit of water. When that water evaporates, the little plastic balls collapse and the pigment gets trapped in that binder and it sticks to the surface. Now, you know, pigment can be put in a lot of different binders. You can put pigment in uh, linseed oil and make oil paint. You can put it in gum arabic and make watercolor. You can put it in egg yolk and make egg tempera. You can do all kinds of stuff with pigment. Pigment is always pigment. Pigment doesn't change no matter what kind of paint you're working with. What changes is the binder. And the interesting thing about acrylic paint and acrylic binders is that they can do lots and lots of stuff. They can be thick, they can be thin, they can be chunky, they can be opaque, they can be transparent, lots and lots and lots of stuff. But the one thing that you want to remember is that the, the common thread that runs through all of the acrylic paints and the things I'm going to talk about today, the common thread that runs through there is that the binder is this acrylic polymer base, okay? And that's really important. Now, the most common owl, I just sat on the cord, the most common um, 
binder that I see be that I see people using over and over and over again is polymer medium okay so I'm going to show this to the camera whoops I'm going to turn it the right way there <laughs> polymer medium now this one happens to be gloss and I think last week we might have talked about gloss and matte a little bit um, but this is polymer medium and this is pourable and kind of thin so I'm going to go to the overhead camera here for a quick second and show you what I mean let's get over there and I am presuming you can still hear me let me just double check and make sure everything's going well in YouTube land looks good okay all right so I've got polymer medium here and I'm gonna pour it out on this plate and see how it kind of looks like a sort of a skim milk or cream maybe see that okay now if we look at that and then we look at something like heavy gel gloss which is a, a thicker polymer okay I'm gonna squeeze that out on the plate see how it's thick like toothpaste really thick doesn't run these are both polymer mediums this one's thicker this one's thinner and the only difference is the thickness of the product okay so I want to just kind of make sure you you're with me on that and um, before I start talking about the different types of paint we're going to talk about so let me come back here and uh, talk to you for a sec now um, because we have so many different polymers thousands of polymers we can do lots and lots and lots of stuff with acrylic paint but I want you to remember that everything that I'm showing you today is acrylic paint it's not an ink or some other device it's acrylic paint okay especially when I show you the high flow when I show you the high flow get that up to the camera whoops there um, when I show you the high flow it has a very very thin uh, lightweight feel to it okay it almost feels like it's ink but I don't want you to look at this as being ink it's not ink it's acrylic paint made with a very very thin polymer base polymer binder okay that's going to be important here in a minute when I show you this paint all right so without further ado let's go to the overhead camera and take a look at these different types of paints so this is fluid paint this is golden quinacridone magenta fluid and see that on the plate how it kind of runs but it's not super runny okay now I'm gonna put right next to it I'm going to put quinacridone magenta high flow there's a puddle of that look at the difference see how fast that runs down the plate that's because the high flow is made with this very very thin viscosity the binder is super super thin much thinner than the fluid paint so see the fluid paint there doesn't do that same kind of flowy thing that the high flow does it it um, is a little bit thicker now even thicker still is our heavy body paint this is quinacridone red these two are magenta and this is quinacridone red so see that's like toothpaste high flow fluid and heavy body okay very important to understand the differences between those and the way that they behave okay now let me uh, take a quick look over here on YouTube and see if there are any questions looks pretty good okay if you all have questions just pop them right there in the chat box okay and I'll try to get to them I um, I'm here by myself of course as you as you know <laughs> if you've tuned in before you know it's I'm just a you know solo unit over here I'm in charge of everything 
and so um, I'll have to like pop over and check into the chat box here in a minute to make sure we, we don't have any questions. But what I want to um, talk a little bit about today is the proper use for these different types of viscosities of paint. So, you know, when I was a little girl and I would help my dad work on the car and he would send me into the garage to get a monkey wrench and I would come back with a screwdriver, he'd be like, baby sister, you need to get the right tool for the right job, okay? So that's exactly what I'm talking about when I, when I talk about the differences in these paints. The heavy body paint is going to give you a big thick brush stroke. The fluid paint is going to lay down flat and cover a surface and not leave much of a brush stroke. And the high flow is going to saturate things like paper, uh, watercolor paper, fiber paste, anything that's absorbent, it's going to really saturate that because it's so light. And also, it's really useful for using in an airbrush, which is way too much fun. I can't even tell you. So much fun. So I'm gonna, um, once we're finished and this recording goes up on YouTube, I'm going to put a couple of notes in the show notes about how to get some very cool stuff to play with these um, with these paints. And the one thing I want to tell you that is the most fun is something called a preval airbrush. I will put it in the show notes. So when you when you're all finished and we're wrapping up, you go take a look at that. If you're in YouTube right now, I'll just pop over here and pop it right into the chat box, Preval Airbrush. Just Google that. I'll, I'll put it over on Facebook real quick too, Preval Airbrush, in case you're, work, uh, you're watching from over there. But I, I want you guys to Google that Preval Airbrush. You're going to love it. You are going to love it. It's super cool. Okay. Let's uh, get into doing a little bit of fun stuff with these. Let me get back over here to my camera so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is show you kind of one of the cool ways to use the heavy body paint. And I've got my overhead camera ready. There we go. So I've got a little piece of watercolor paper here. And I'm going to just take my Quin Red that I had out earlier, grab a palette knife, and the interesting thing about the heavy body paints is this ability for them to hold their shape. So if I want to put down big impasto type stuff, this is the perfect paint to do it with. Okay, so let's just put that down. Now I can also do a little bit of what's called scraffito, which means that I can just come right back through the paint and create these really pretty marks so that I get the mass tone of the paint. This is the mass tone here. Um, mass tone means the color of the paint uh, as it comes out of the tube or the jar and you don't see any white paper beneath it. The undertone that you can see here in these little marks that I've made, undertone means that we're seeing the color of the paint with paper behind it or uh, the surface behind it. So that's what the, the paint is going to look like in a glaze or if you scumble it or if you dry brush it or if you scrape it down over a surface. Very important to understand the mass tone and the undertone of a color because oftentimes they're very, very different. So good thing to know there, mass tone and undertone. But the heavy body paint is really useful for creating this kind of textural work, okay? So you can really get some nice texture with it. See that kind of cool, thick, impasto kind of paint that you can get. Now, when you're working with the heavy body paint, I don't want you to create layers that are more than about an eighth of an inch thick. So let me show you what I mean. So here's a layer of paint. Let's put a little more paint out. Here's a layer of paint that's about the as thick as you want to go. Maybe we'll go just a tiny bit thicker. And I want to show this sideways to the camera so you can kind of see what I mean. 
just a little bit more because I really want you to get the feeling for that thick buttery texture of the paint. So see that I'm going to kind of get it up to the camera and flip it around so you, so you can kind of see how thick and buttery that is. Now I'm working on a little piece of watercolor paper and this is flexible, right? This is going to stay flexible. Now you might be thinking, uh oh, she's working on watercolor paper. That's not a stable surface. That paint's going to crack. No, it's not. This paint is going to stay flexible because it's acrylic paint. It's not oil paint. If I did this with oil paint, it would be a whole different ball game, okay? Oil paint is a lot more fragile than acrylic paint is. This right here, this is going to stay flexible, no problem. As a matter of fact, when this dries, if I wanted to roll it up, I could. And that's why if you paint on, on paper, you can let the paintings dry, roll them up and store them, and unroll them later, and work right on top of them. Provided that you put a, um, a, a good barrier paper down on, on the top so that nothing will stick to the paint. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a future episode. But what I want to talk about right now is this kind of thick layer of paint. Now I'm going to grab another color. Give me just a sec here. Got to go into my bag of tricks. And I'm going to grab something that will sit on top of that. Let's a uh, little ultramarine blue. So now here's my ultramarine blue heavy body. Now here's what I don't want you to do. I've got this nice juicy layer of Quin Rad, right? What I don't want you to do is put down such a thick layer of paint that you get into trouble between the, between the two layers of paint. And I'll show you what I mean. So here's my ultramarine blue. And I'm just going to lay it down like that and leave it. Okay, let me smear it out a tiny bit. Now, why don't I want you to do that big thick layer of paint like that? See that? I'm going to make sure the camera can see that. Because uh, the, the way that acrylic paint works is there's a little bit of water in the manufacturing process when we make the paint. And in order for the paint to completely dry and bond properly, the, that little bit of water needs to evaporate out and the paint layer will then dry. If you have put a big heavy layer of paint down on top of an, another paint layer and this first paint layer hasn't completely dried, isn't completely, completely dry, and you put this one down, there is the potential for some cracking to between those two paint layers, okay? So as you're building your layers of paint, let me show that to the camera again so you can see how thick that blue is. As you're building your painting and as you're building your layers of paint, pay attention to the drying times between your two layers, okay? And don't ever make your layers more than about, um, I would say about an eighth of an inch thick. That blue layer there is pretty thick. So that's going to have some potential to, um, to crack during the drying process, okay? Okay, now let me come back here and talk to you about something that I want you to think about when you're working. And um, it's always a really good idea to do what we call test for your application. So say, for instance, I was doing this little painting with the big thick layer. I'm going to show that to the camera that big thick layer of ultramarine blue. I'm like, I'm determined to make this work. I want it this way, by golly, I don't care what Tisa said, I'm doing it this way. Okay, all right. I say, yes, we are artists and we're supposed to experiment. We're supposed to break the rules. This is a good thing. That's, that's how things happen, right? That's how we find out new stuff. However, if you just kind of blindly go about doing it that way, Things can fail along the way, and you may never know the reason. Especially, you know, if you're like me and you're in the studio and you're doing this and you're doing that and you got a layer of something on top of a layer of something, you may never know the reason something didn't work. More importantly, you may never know the reason something did work. 
you get some fabulous thing and you don't quite know how you did it unless you're taking good notes along the way and doing what we call testing for your application so I treat my studio like a laboratory I keep notes of what I'm doing I do samples I'm always doing samples um, and I can send you guys a link to getting like a hundred pieces of map board so that you can do samples on them pretty cheap but it's a really really good idea if you've got a brainstorm going on and you're like you know what that ultramarine blue thing that she talked about I'm gonna do that it's gonna be so cool make notes and test for your application now testing for your application means that you create a small piece just like the big piece or identical piece you create it exactly the same way same surface same type of paint same environment same studio lighting same everything okay and you keep really good notes and then you'll know when you get that phenomenal end result that blows everybody away you will know how to make it again and again and again okay hope that's helpful all right let's go back to our other viscosities of paint we're gonna jump over here to the overhead and I'm gonna check and see if anybody's flailing around out there in the weeds or if they need me let's just see okay looks like we're good all right so that is a that's a little bit about heavy body paint what it's really good for now of course you can take heavy body paint and make it thin like fluid paint of course you can however it's never going to be fluid paint it's going to be heavy body paint that's been watered down so let me show you what I mean here is I'm trying to get a paper towel hold on a sec here is fluid paint here is heavy body paint and again this is Quinn red and Quinn magenta side by side now watch what happens I take the oops lost my paintbrush hold on and I take the fluid paint I'm gonna just pull it in a little water see that look how pretty that that looks in the water really gorgeous now my Quinn red see my Quinn red here Quinn red doesn't look so great does it and the reason is because in order for me to make the Quinn red as fluid as the fluid is I have to oversaturate it with water I have to put so much water in it that it desaturates the color that's the only way you're gonna make a heavy body paint that fluid now if you're determined to make your heavy body paint fluid then the best thing you can add to it is airbrush medium or airbrush extender and that will help it get more fluid without being desaturated but I gotta tell you the mixing process between these two is not easy okay so you're gonna be mixing 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 if you want to thin that heavy body paint down mix 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 okay we just can't do it out here as well as they can do it in the factory of course not right because they've got big cool machines and stuff so like dad used to tell me don't get me a hammer when I need a monkey wrench if you need fluid paint probably best that you get fluid paint instead of trying to make heavy body paint be a fluid paint okay now why would you need fluid paint instead of heavy body paint well let's go back to the overhead camera and I'll show you what I mean here is a little piece of paper and I'm going to get a dry paintbrush, super dry. I hope it's going to be dry enough. And I'm going to take my little bit of Quinn Red here, Quinn Red Heavy Body, and I'm going to cover this. I'm just going to scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub, right? I want this Quinn Red to cover the background of that watercolor paper by golly so I'm just gonna scrub it in scrub 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 you can see here that I'm 
having to exert a fair amount of energy to get that covered and it's not doing a great job. It is not going to be a uniform coverage. It's not going to lay down very well, you know, and I'm picking up blue. So yes, I can, I can scumble this down and I can make it cover the entire piece of watercolor paper, but it's going to take a little effort. But what if I take the fluid paint and do the same thing? Look at that. Yeah, that's going to take me about three or four paint strokes to do that. Yeah, because you know I'm the lazy artist, right? So less effort, a lot more uniform surface, and whoops, and that's it, right? A lot easier to get that paint to lay down flat without a brush stroke you can cover a big canvas a lot easier it with fluid paint. So when I'm working on these big canvases like this one and bigger, larger than that even, my backgrounds, I lay my backgrounds down in fluid paint because it goes right down into the weave of the canvas. I don't have to scrub, 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 right? So save yourself a little energy and get your fluid paint down for your background. Okay, now back to the overhead camera. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about the high flow. And what does the high flow do? Well, the high flow is um, an amazing product that behaves like ink. It has a very, very thin consistency. So it is really wonderful for doing things like watercolor type applications and I'm going to find my paintbrush there it is watercolor type applications so I'm going to put a little water down my water is now pinkish from the Quinn Magenta but I'm going to just drop put a drop or two of high flow in it and you can see it just moves and does all kinds of cool stuff in the water. It's an amazingly powerful paint and because these golden high flows are so highly pigmented a little bit goes a long long way. Okay now can we add the high flow and the fluid together? You betcha and here's my Quinn bronze I mean Quinn bronze here's my iridescent bronze and I'm just wondering if I have any left in this because it feels empty. Let's see. There we go. That's plenty. One of the things that I love about the quinacridone, about the iridescent bronze, is that it has this phthalo green undertone. I'm going to show you that in a minute. It's not coming out right here, but I'm going to show you that in a minute. We can definitely use the high flow and the fluid together. Now the fluid as I showed you earlier, the fluid will really saturate a piece of paper and lay down flat. And this particular little piece I did here had no water in it. So I just, I just laid the paint right down on the paper and bam, it was done, right? When that dries, this will not be very absorbent because I've got a lot of acrylic paint down on it, okay? On the other hand, if I've got my piece of watercolor paper here, and I've got just water and I put some water down. Let's put a little bit of water down. Let's grab a little iridescent bronze. Oh yeah. That's pretty awesome, right? And that phthalo green undertone that you see coming out of that that is the only pigment that does that. You see that green undertone there? I'm hoping the camera can see that. When I pick this up, it's going to run all over the place, but I'll show you what I mean. There's that really pretty green undertone. So that phthalo green, that is the only pigment that has that sort of undertone in it. And it's a really beautiful. So when you're using iridescent bronze on an absorbent surface, 
like watercolor paper and you're working with water, you're going to be able to get that really pretty undertone to um, drop out of the paint. Okay, so I am using very little paint here and a lot of water. Now, I believe in last week's um, Facebook, in, in last week's live hangout, I think I probably talked about using water in your paint. I'm not sure if I did or not. But if I didn't, I want to be clear that you can use a lot of water in your paint as long as you're working on an absorbent surface. Okay? Um, if you're working on regular canvas, let's go back over here and let me talk to you for a second. Um, if you're working on regular canvas, I don't want you to use a lot of water in your paint because it is going to break that binder and it's not going to create a good paint film on your canvas. When we're working on watercolor paper or some other absorbent surface like fiber paste or something like that, we can use lots and lots of water because we don't have to worry about the binder holding the pigment to the surface. Okay? So if you have questions about that, just, just send me an email or get over to the Golden website and take a look at, at, at some of the information there. There's also a really, really good video by my buddy Michelle Theberge. I'm going to put that in the chat box right now. She's on YouTube as well. Just go and Google this name and I'm going to put it on the Facebook chat box too. Hi Simcha. Um, hang on one second. Just go and look at Michelle Theberge and um, check out her video that says the number one mistake acrylic painters make. She's talking about putting all that water in the paint. And I adore her. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to be interviewed by her later this month. So be looking out for that. I'll be sure I send out an email about that. I'm going to be on her YouTube. I'm going to be guesting on her YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, take a look at that and don't put too much water in your paint. If you're working on canvas and if you're working on watercolor paper, fiber paste, light molding paste, all these other things, you can use as much water as you want, okay? We'll go into that more at some point in the future. Okay, Simcha has a question for me. Is high flow for use only on watercolor paper or can it be used on canvas? Well, you know, the thing about high flow is that it is an acrylic paint and it is, it's in a polymer binder. So it is sticky. It's going to stick. So yes, you can use it on um, regular canvas, but don't put any water in it if you're going to use it on regular canvas. You really just want to maintain the bond that the paint makes to the canvas right out of the bottle, okay? So you could definitely use it like it works great if you put it in a, a technical pen. I think, um, I don't think you want to put it in a technical pen that is smaller than a one. Like I wouldn't go down to a zero because the pigments might be too big to go through that. But you can definitely do that. Airbrush, it's great for an airbrush. Um, so yeah, check, check out the Preval airbrush and definitely you can use it on canvas un unthinned is that right non-thinned <laughs> um okay so that's the scoop on that three different viscosities and the best way to use those three heavy body paint gets you that big impasto um, look big thick paint but don't go too thick okay Make sure that your layers are drying properly. You know, and that's kind of a good rule of thumb no matter how you work. If you work thick or thin, it's a really good idea to make sure that your layers dry properly before you put another layer on top. And the reason for that is that, you know, you can trap moisture between those layers. Look at me, I've got paint. <laughs> um, you can trap moisture between those layers and you can make things do some really wonky stuff. So make sure your layers are dry, okay? Um, Simcha, you had another comment? Let me just see if I can see it. Undiluted, yes, undiluted, right, on canvas, right? On paper, put as much water as you want, watercolor paper and stuff, use all the water you want. 
Um, as a matter of fact, I'm probably going to be posting a video in the not too distant future about some pouring and stuff like that that I'm doing in the studio. So I'm doing lots and lots of pouring with um, airbrush medium and high flow and flow release and stuff like that. Okay, so stay tuned for that. There's some some cool stuff coming along. All right. Well, it's time to give away some paint. So first, I have to find my phone. And I'm going to write down a number on my phone. And you guys are going to guess what the number is. And then I'm going to give you paint. That's pretty easy, right? OK, so let me get over here to this thing where I can write a number. And in the meantime, are there any other questions for me? Let me check over here on the YouTube page and see if there are any questions over there. Um, oh, hi, Rena. How are you? Is there a difference between heavy body and golden and soft body in Liquitex? Hmm. You know, I don't, uh, I haven't used the soft body in, in Liquitex. So I'm not really sure. Um, that's a good question. You know, it leads me to believe just from the name. And you know, I'm going to see Michelle here, Michelle Theberge, and she used to work for Liquitex. I'll ask her. But um, I'm not positive about what the thickness of the of the Liquitex soft body is. I'm kind of thinking it's somewhere between our heavy body and the fluid. Hard to say. Our heavy body is really stiff. So it feels like um, very stiff butter. So um, that it may be that the soft body in Liquitex is a little less stiff, you know? And here's the thing about that. I want y'all to remember this. Let me get over here so I can write the number to give paint away. Um, hold on a second. Let me just write this really quick. Okay, whoops. Um, the, sorry guys. There, there we go. Okay. I think this is working. <laughs> Okay, there we go. I can write my number now. Oh, technology, technology. Um, all right. Where was I? Uh, the difference between soft body and... Okay. Uh, what I wanted to point out that is important to remember is that this whole system, acrylic paint, is polymer-based. And there are literally thousands of polymers, okay? Polymer is a fancy way of saying plastic. So you guys, plastic, you know, plastic, plastic, the table that I'm sitting at is plastic. The thick, thin thing is really, the spectrum there is really broad. So that's also the very cool thing about working inside a polymer system, like with this acrylic painting system. The very cool thing about it is that with a few exceptions, these thick and thin polymers can be worked together. So you've got a really, really wide range of ingredients that you could use. So you can have a thick polymer like heavy gel. Where'd my heavy gel go? Heavy gel gloss, which I lost. You can have a thick polymer like heavy body paint, and you can mix it with high flow, which is thin. You can put that down. You can have fluid and heavy body, and you can mix those together. So the main thing you want to remember when you're working with all these different thick and thinnesses is that the drying time is what you want to pay most attention to because you don't want to get a thin layer that's not dry and put a thick layer over it and trap moisture down here or vice versa. Okay, so make sure your layers dry really well as you're building things up. And then the next question you're going to ask me is, right, how do I tell when something's dry? Well, I love this question because there's so many answers to it. But um, depending on how hot it is, how much airflow, what kind of surface you're working on, where in the world you are. Your paint is going to dry really, really different if you're in Arizona here in the United States versus if you're in New Orleans, you know, where it's really wet and moist. And here in the Bay Area, things dry slower here than they do in 
the desert. So all that kind of stuff. But again, comes back to that thing I was talking about earlier, which is test for your application. So on, you know, Wednesday at 430, this piece of paper with fluid paint dries this fast. You know, at midnight on a rainy day with uh, it's 50 degrees, it's going to dry completely differently. Okay. So do you, do you think that I have little pieces of paper at my studio that have notes on the back of them as to what day and what time and what the temperature was? You bet I do. You bet I do. Because I don't want to have to redo something because I completely ruined it because I didn't let it dry. Okay? That has happened to me. And I think there might even be a, a video here on the YouTube channel um, that actually speaks to how I completely messed up two paintings because I didn't let them dry. Okay? I'll see if I can find that video. It's pretty hilarious. Okay. All right. Now back to giving paint away. Um, all right. So I want you to pick a number between 1 and 10. 1 and 10. And whoever's closest, I'm going to give you some paint. And what am I giving away today? I told you, but I forgot. Okay. Heavy gel gloss and pyro red dark this is a gorgeous color and interference violet my fingers in the way interference violet okay put your number in the chat box and tell me what you think the number is between one and ten and i'm going to give you some paint let me see who's in the chat box over here simcha are you going to guess simcha you should guess and who else is over here um, okay, Rena guest number four. All right. And for some reason, Simcha, I'm not seeing your your um, comment there. Let me refresh this page. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. Drum roll, please. <laughs> I need sound effects, you guys. Will somebody do that? Look into that for me. Simcha, you say three. Okay, and what did you say, Rena? Rena, you said four. It's, oh, fiddle. Hold on. It's eight. So, Rena, actually, you are closer by one letter. I mean, one number. Okay, so I will send you some paint, and um, that'll go out in a few days. I actually have something, I have to mail out something from last week, too. So, so uh, I'll get myself to the post office. All right. So if there aren't any more questions, you guys don't have any burning questions about acrylic problems you're running into, anybody? You know, that's my job. I need to, you know, help you out if you're running into stuff, into problems. Everybody's doing fabulous out there in the world of acrylic painting. I love that. Awesome. Now, before I forget, ooh, it's time for me to do a uh, commercial, right? <laughs> so I want you guys to join me on Thursday nights in Creative Flow. And uh, we're having a really good time over there in Creative Flow. And I will, you know what? I will, oh yeah, oh Rena, that's right. Yours, you won last week too. See, that's, loyalty has its benefits, right? <laughs> I love it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, uh, my, trying to get the thing to work here and it doesn't want to. I'm going to put the uh, link here for you to go over to Creative Flow, to enroll in Creative Flow and uh, get that class on Thursday night. Here's the link. I'll just put it in the chat box for you. There you go. Okay, and I'll put that over here in Facebook for you, Simcha. Okay. So you all get over there on Thursday nights and check it out. We are going to be doing some really fun stuff. I will give you a clue. Tomorrow night in Creative Flow, you will need a Sharpie pen. That's the only clue that I'm going to give you. <laughs> It's a lot of fun, and we have some pretty amazing music. I have had a lot of fun um, looking at 
all these wonderful composers. What a horrible job, right? I have to listen to hours of beautiful music to find the right music for the Creative Flow Workshop. Oh, my job is so hard, you guys. <laughs> All right, I am going to sign off and uh, look for some fun stuff in the email. I will be posting some stuff uh, in the uh, YouTube, on the YouTube watch page where this recording goes up live or recorded live goes up after we're finished here. It'll go up on the, on the watch page and you'll be able to come back and see all the stuff that we did today. And I'll put some notes there about pre-val and about um, some other stuff that you can look at, okay? All right, Simcha, I think you had something else, and let me just refresh and see what it is. I ha Every time I get a comment over here, I have to refresh the page, so it's a bit clunky. Um, so let me just see if I need to help Simcha out before I sign off. And the internet seems to be kind of slow today. You're welcome, Simcha. I'm really glad you got to uh, jump in there with us today. It was fun to see you, to see you there from across the pond. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and rest of your evening, wherever you may be in the, the wide world. And I hope I see you in Creative Flow tomorrow night or some other place. You never know where I'm going to land, okay? All right. Everybody have a fabulous day and uh, keep painting, okay? I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.